Today on Crazy Performance Repair, we're going to attempt a quick diagnostic on this car. Uh, we're going to see what happens when you have a bunch of map sensor codes. So stay tuned. So today I am working on a 2000 Monte Carlo SS and uh, this is not the supercharged model so we went back a little ways right I mean admittedly even though I don't like to say these cars are old they are old it's 19 years old uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try and diagnose this thing now I'll show you the codes in a minute but you notice I have my scanner here for any of you that are new to the channel I recently had to have the scanner replaced it almost burnt my shop down the battery almost exploded be sure to check that episode out at the end it'll be that little eye in the corner of the, the screen there you can click on that but uh, I'm gonna explain what they did to help me out with the scanner at the end of the video here so uh, we'll, we'll go over that as well but first things first we're gonna take care of this car and uh, make an attempt to quickly diagnose it okay so here are the codes we got uh, 107 8 6 7 so there's two 107s Oh no, this is a 1107, 1106, and that's a 107, 108. Okay, anyway, so the codes list to this. Sensor circuit low voltage, sensor circuit low voltage, sensor circuit high voltage, sensor circuit low voltage. So we have, oh no, this is high. Okay, so low, high, high, low. So we have two lows, two high voltage circuits, all of which are for manifold absolute pressure sensor map 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 so we're gonna go ahead and look into the map sensor voltages right now now the thing with those codes is those are current and history codes I didn't even bother looking at what's what I just see a bunch of map sensor codes so I know there's some kind of map sensor concern and they're all voltage circuit codes which means either this thing is shorted the wiring somewhere else is shorted causing it to affect what this sees at the computer and for some reason it's not throwing another code. That's not very likely, but it's possible. Or or there's a, a wire that's open and having trouble getting enough power to it intermittently, which is very possible in the respect of, you see I got, I got a connector here, and this every time the engine flexes and moves this connector, I probably shouldn't have even moved that to be honest, then I got a wire harness over there that could also be doing the same thing. So we could have wires that are stretching and pulling and moving around and disconnecting themselves. So that's also something that could be causing it. Now, a short can cause high or low voltages depending on where the circuit it shorts at. Uh, for instance, you would have, so the set signal wire, I believe is the screen one. I'm not confident. Well, actually, it's, oh, it says it right here. So yeah, five out ground. I miss these older cars. They always tell you what, what is what right on the car and their diagrams are so much better. All right, so anyway, we have five volt. So this guy's gonna be the five volt. The out is the center and the ground is this orange wire over here. And so what we would have is, let's say, let's say our five volt was shorting, for instance. If our five volt was shorting to ground, we would have a low voltage concern. But let's go ahead and let's get the voltmeter on here and see what kind of signals we're getting. I'm gonna go ahead and use my basic Fluke 88. I'm not gonna break out the lab scope. That way you guys can do this at home if you have any basic meter with a voltage reading. And I'm gonna first ground out the ground lead because I'm checking for five volt reference. Oh, I don't have the red lead. I'll be right back. All right, so I decided not to grab my fancy lead like I was originally planning on using. I'm actually gonna do this more of a, a home, home do, do it yourself or friendly. Uh, basically what you need is some kind of a pin. This is a T pin. It's available at any like Joanne Fabrics or whatever. But if you use this, then you can just take your alligator clip and clamp onto it to check things. Now what I wanna do is I wanna check all these voltages individually. So we know that this one is supposed to be five volt according to that guy there. I'm gonna go ahead and back probe this. Now, when I back probe the wires like this, I'm following along the wire. I'm trying not to poke a hole in the little boot that's in there. I'm trying to follow along the boot. So I have a specific technique that I go in at a goofy angle and I tip down. So I go in kind of at this downward angle against like say the top of the wire here since I'm going in at this angle. And I go just enough to get started on that boot and then I push it 
in alongside that boot and I can actually feel it bottom out against the wire mechanism and if I can I try to get around it there we go because if I get around it then I know the pin is going to be laying against the inside of this thing of course clamp that guy on there and then we are going to turn the meter on now technically I should not have any voltage there because I do not have the key on yet okay so I got nothing I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on Alright, so you can see I got a nice, good, solid 5 volts. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this, this lead over to the next pin area. And I'm going to check these before I do any kind of moving around of wires or anything. Ah, I'm at 5 volts. So right now it's at 4.97. Now, it's at atmosphere right now, so it should technically be maxed out one direction. Uh, for the most part, I mean, it's not it's not the five point what I get 505 or something over here So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna start it up and then we're gonna see where the voltage goes from there All right, so you can see I'm still over five volts here uh, or now I'm over 5 volts. That's terrible. That's not right. It should not be like that at all. So I have either one of two things going on. Either I have a bad ground or I have a bad sensor. So I'm going to go ahead, move this over. Now you can see it looks like I have a ground here. If I didn't have a ground here, this would show voltage. It's got 0 .06, that's almost nothing. Now just to verify that, I'm gonna take it off my ground and I'm gonna put it on power. So you see it's showing full battery voltage or charging system voltage. Go back to a ground source and I'm right back to the same. So that tells me my ground wire is good. My power wire, and my power wire is good at 509. And my signal wire is getting something from here. Now, just to verify and make sure that this signal wire isn't shorted inside the harness, we're gonna go ahead and unplug this. Now you can see I'm down to 0 0.05, which is similar to the ground. That could just be electrical noise from these coils that are right next to me even, who knows. But uh, that's not enough to be considered voltage at all. So we know for a fact that this sensor is shot. I'm gonna go grab a new sensor. Hopefully I have one sitting in my bin of used parts because it's an old enough car. And uh, we'll see what it does. Okay, so I didn't cross any part numbers or anything yet. It looks the same, but it doesn't mean it is the same. Now, this one here could be something from a boost reference type of scenario where it's got a different range built into it, but all I wanna do is make sure that it works. So, I'm gonna go ahead, put this in, and see if I get correct signal, since I have one here. Who knows what size it is, it's most likely right. Um, so all map sensors, if it's a zero, it's a, a five volt reference based map sensor, which is pretty much all of them on cars, uh, and it's a no boost type map sensor, then they're pretty much all the same. Their ranges are the same, their plugins are damn near the same, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, it has the same connector. So we're gonna go ahead, plug this guy in and see what we get. Now one thing I wanna note, is see there's a little bit of slimy on here somebody had dielectric grease on here because they were messing around with the sensor now this guy said that he had a math sensor code which is maf this is map i think he misread the code and he did replace the map or math sensor but this is a map sensor that has a problem so his diagnosis was just the wrong part uh, he probably would have got it had he been looking at the right part so i'm going to go ahead and turn the key on Now we can see we're at a lower voltage, 4.77. That seems more like it should to me. I thought it seemed a little bit high before. This is probably the correct map sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and start it now. All right, there you have it. We're at 1.28. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a throttle. There it is. It looks like it's working perfectly and it's the right range too. As it goes up high four, let's do uh, min-max here. 
There we go. Okay, so right now we're just recording. So we can see current max is 1.6, minimum 104, average 110, we don't care about average. Now if I snap the throttle, we'll see the max is 4.8, minimum 0.36. So we know that this thing is doing a full sweep because normally it's like 0.44 to 4.7 something for a sweep and this thing's actually doing beyond a full sweep. So this is gonna be the correct map sensor. Uh, if you had the incorrect map sensor, say this was a boost sensor, then this sweep would be a lot shorter. Uh, it would be maybe a volt down or two volts down in, in the amount of sweep that it has. And that would be because it's meant for a very large sweep for pressure relation type things. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the car off, clear the codes, and it'll be good to go. All right, so now that we got the car fixed, uh, let's go over the scanner deal real quick for those of you still watching. Um, we have a Altel 906 TS, and as you guys know from the video that you hopefully watched already, if not, go ahead and watch it and then come back to this one back and forth, you know, big deal. I'll link this one on that one later. Uh, so, <clears throat> on this scanner, the battery was about to pop, uh, or did pop, and it almost took out just about everything. Uh, they did a service deal on it. Now, what I found out with Autel is their customer service is actually really good. Uh, their payment system could use some help, but no big deal. Uh, so their customer service is actually really good. What they do is if you pay for their annual updates, they give you a full warranty. I was not aware of that. Now, I did not have a warranty because I didn't pay for the updates. I went two years without updating. I figure I'm going to save money, avoid the snap. You know, snap on, for instance, you pay an annual update and, and you do either you sign up for their program, which is so much a month or so much a year, or so much every six months, whatever, or you just pay the truck guy X amount every time you update it. And if you skip an update, they penalize you. So they charge you extra, which I think is kind of unfair and a bit greedy. And plus their updates are a little bit more money than what Autel is. And understandably so, they do have a little bit better software in regards to connectivity for the, the computer on the vehicle uh, in respect of a broader spectrum. Now, Autel has trouble with Ford and some European stuff, but for the most part, I do like their options they have better. They have more options in the software, but they do have some connectivity issues, and that's where, I'm, anyway, I'm rambling. But, so back to the warranty thing. So the the scanner itself, it's a warranty situation. They offered me to just pay for the update, and then they said, pay a deductible fee. So the update was like 800 bucks, roughly. And then uh, the deductible is 500, but they worked with me, and I ended up paying 1300. Uh, Actually, that would be, yeah, pretty much it, exactly. But of course, there's taxes and fees and other things too. But basically, I pay 1300 bucks, and I got essentially a replacement scan tool. And these things are like $2,800 new, I think. So I know it's well over two. So I know it's a lot cheaper doing it that way than getting a new one. And now I'm up to date and current and all that jazz. But I found out if I was paying for the updates normally, it comes with a warranty. The warranty lasts for as long as you pay for the updates. When you stop paying for the updates, then the warranty stops, but they still were willing to honor it as long as I was willing to pay for the update, and that's where the 800 comes from. So I did the 800, and the deductible thing has me a little worried, a little confused, but basically they cover everything. So if, if something happens to it during the year, I think up to $500 beyond that, anything's covered. So I don't know if it's some kind of weird deductible thing, but either way, their customer service was good. I gave them time because I was trying to work through PayPal. I wanted to pay with PayPal because of the pay later thing that PayPal has. They have a six month interest free ordeal. And uh, so I usually do that because then I can just pay it within the six months quick, uh, just because I use that to make money, obviously. And along with other things, whenever I buy some bigger ticket item, I use the PayPal deal because I can always pay it back plenty soon enough if I'm just a little bit short on cash. So uh, that's what I did. I wanted to do the PayPal deal. They had a PayPal billing, but their PayPal services weren't working correctly. I ended up having to put it on my credit card, which sucks, but I'll pay it. It's not a big deal. 
Uh, I just was, I like not having to pay such a heavy chunk right out of the gate, if I can help it. <laughs> but anyway, I had the money, I paid for it, I got the scanner, everything seems great. I did have to reconnect and do a bunch of updating. Uh, it was way out of date. But of course, I'm allowed to update now because it's uh, all update paid. So I'm good for another year and now if anything happens, I already met any deductible that they might require, which seems odd to me for a scan tool. But I digress. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the scanner away. You guys enjoy your day. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, hope to see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. <sighs> Got a lot of work to do.